Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you are doing well. Um, just a little FYI, I need to get a new mic. I've been trying for like about 15 minutes to connect it, but it won't connect. So we're gonna have to do without a mic. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Um, I'll make sure there's not a lot of echo in this video, but that is besides the point. Um, anyways, let's jump into this video. So today I will be talking about the top 10, 10 y'all, 10 favorite books of mine. Um, these books are very dear to my heart, I will say. They have helped me through my whole spiritual journey and some of them have actually inspired me to start my spiritual journey. So, um, yeah, so I wanted to share this with you guys. So grab a cup of water, grab some tea, grab snacks, whatever you want. This is gonna be a sit down video. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get into it. So the first book I wanna talk about, number one. So my favorite one of them all is called The Search for the Truth. Um, I do have my notes, so I will be looking at my notebook. But it is The Search the search for the Truth. I don't know why that's a tongue twister. Um, by Michael Singer. There's another book that I read from him called The Surrender Experiment. I read The Surrender Experiment first, and then I read The Search for the Truth second. Um, I personally think it doesn't matter what order you read his book in. Um, but this one in particular was my favorite. I rated it a 9 out of 10. And honestly, this book really left me speechless. I actually took a long time to read this book. I think this was the longest time I took to read a book. It was about three months, pushing three months to read it. Um, I will say at this time I was traveling, doing all that good stuff. So it was kind of hard to juggle. But um, I ended up reading this book when I came back to the US, to New York, and I like really doubled down and like wanted to finish the book with my time being there. So honestly, how can I say this? I mean, I wrote it down. It's just, it really left me speechless. I don't really know how to describe it. It kind of, for me personally, it was able to answer a lot of questions I had towards the universe and kind of just how the universe navigates with us and how life, life, um, how we're kind of, how can I say this? It kind of showed like the behind the scenes of what happens with energy, frequency, vibration, kind of just how we get to where we are now. Um, and I mainly love this book because this book gives you a lot of space to write, to highlight, to quote, it gives you space to actually reflect on what's being said. So a lot of the chapters, I um, in the back of the chapter, I believe, or they had an extra page of a blank page, I write down the summary of every chapter. Um, I sadly don't have the book with me no more. I end up giving it to somebody. It's kind of one of those books that I didn't want to hold on to and not share with somebody else. It was definitely a book where I feel like I got what I needed and I know the next person would get the same thing. But eventually I would like to add this back into my collection and read it again, honestly. But the only reason why I didn't give it a 10 out of 10 is just because I will say some of the chapters were very heavy on the topic. So I think that's why it took me so long to finish the book is because every chapter was so dense with information that I didn't want to over skip or overlook or I didn't want to quickly digest it. I actually want to take the time to understand what's being said and what's being expressed. So that was mainly why I didn't give it a full 10 out of 10. But to summarize it all, it's a book where you are is explaining the search of your higher self. It's explaining the journey it takes to get to a higher frequency than where you are at the moment. Um, it goes from examples to personal experiences to scientific methods and scientific um explanations and all that stuff so i highly re recommend this book you can find this book on thrift books amazon all the books that i have it is very international you can find it probably at your library 
um, I will link below the birth book um, just for a cheaper alternative if you are looking for these books um, but yeah I love this book it was it was 10 out of 10 um, 10 out of 10 from the information only 9 out of 10 because it was very dense <laughs> but to move forward my second favorite book is this one it is the anatomy of the spirits by Caroline Miss Myers um, and it kind of is explaining it is the seven stages of power and healing t and I did get this book a 10 out of 10 um, honestly I really love this book this book has been with me for a while now and it's been used up <laughs> I'm actually planning on reading it again because I feel like um, I feel like it's a book you just can't get tired of honestly but um, I feel like this book was particularly good at explaining chakras energies frequencies and kind of just putting it in a simple form so like a plus b equals c type of information um and i love how detailed each chapter was on top of that they weren't too long they weren't too repetitive they weren't kind of like overlap each other it was like this is it we're gonna explain it and then it was like okay now we're gonna give an example um I also love in this book in particular there is um there is some charts there's some tables that you can look at while they ex while they're explaining what's being said in a chapter which I, I love pictures you can show a picture I'm I'm a hundred percent with it um so I love that because it really helped to navigate what was being said visually and I also love this book because it was just very honest it wasn't a lot of like how can i say this it wasn't overly trying to baby the information it was just being honest like this is what it is you take it or leave it type of thing um and i actually wrote down a favorite quote of mine in the book and the quote says healing is simple but it's not easy the steps are few yet they demand great effort I feel like that sums up the book. It's like, if, because at the end of the day, healing is a choice. It's not, it's not something you have to do. Um, and maybe not something you need to do within this life path you are in. But once you make that choice, it is a lifetime choice. It's not just a few months or a few days. It's, it's a commitment. It's a marriage that you are making with yourself through this life path until you go to the next. Um, but I absolutely love this book. This was a great, great, great book. Um, never can get tired of it. And then my third favorite book is The Mastery of Love um, by Don Miguel Ruz. I give this book a 10 out of 10. I first of all love the cover. like, And it's such a small book. So I actually took this book with me through my traveling. Because it fits so well in my book bag. I didn't have to like worry about it or it getting damaged it just fit perfectly in there and i was able to read it throughout my experience and it's funny enough because at the time i really needed this book i really needed to read this book because i was going through a transformation of trying to understand what how can i say this what new love i wanted to bring into my life what type of love that i want to have for myself and for others what type of relationships I want to leave behind and add into my life and this book in particular was the guideline for that it, it legit is a practical guideline to the art of relationships and it came at a perfect time for me um because i was in a search of that i was in a search for a new relationship with myself i was in a search of a new relationship with other people i was in search of the love that i kept writing writing about in my journal and so I really love this book because also it was just like it brought it was a it was a way where it brought sense to a lot of stuff um the way it's formatted it kind of just highlights the problem and then it goes into the cause and effect of that problem and then it gives you a solution and it's up to you how you want to navigate that i also felt like it was a guidance through through the ability to hold what was being given to me it's like okay here's this new love we're gonna show you how to keep this and it's up to you on whether or not you want to keep it in your life and i feel like that book helped me to understand 
certain triggers I was having, certain experiences that I didn't understand, certain people I was meeting, and being exposed to a different type of affection, being exposed to a different type of love was... It, was, it wasn't hard, but it was difficult for me to accept. And I feel like this book helped me through that. Um, and I also have a favorite quote from this book, which is, Selfish, Selfishness comes from poverty in the heart, from the belief that love is not abundant. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my next book, just to give on a lighter note, um, is Chameleon Aura. <laughs> This is by Billy Chop Chopta Chopta. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, this is a poetry book, and I gave this book a ten out of ten. I actually, I feel like I think I got this from a friend, but during this time, I was kind of like getting into my poet stage of my life around this time this also was a time i think this book was right after i read milk and honey and during this time i was kind i was trying to open my poet side a bit more um before then i would i would write poetry but not really i would just like throw up my emotions on paper in a poetic way <laughs> kind of i don't know but during this time i when after reading these two books that's when I actually took my poetry more seriously. That was also the time where I started to actually share my poetry with other people. Um, I even found confidence to express myself through poetry and just to take myself more seriously as a poet. Those These two books definitely inspired that in me, um, especially Chameleon. I just I just love it I love the book I loved every poem in it I even like highlighted some of the poems because it just felt very sincere to me to my experience and what I was going through um and I did write a poem down that I wanted to share and it's on page 245 and it says you are not responsible for someone else's insecurities it is not your responsibility to babysit people's insecurities you are not obligated to slow down your bloom so they can meet you at a level where they are comfortable with your growth. Your growth is too important to them. The light within you for someone still trying to find their own way. I just love that poem. A lot of them are very, not very short, but most of them are short. Some are like a bit long, but I loved it. It was a great book. Um, and then my next favorite book. Ah! Just Kids by Patti Smith. This book I definitely got from a friend and me and her were reading it at the same time. And I, guys, if you don't know, I am a sucker for romantic books, but also I'm a sucker for art. And if you put the two together, oh my God, I read that, I've been reading this book at least three, I think I read this book at least three to four times now. Um, and this book is 11 out of 10 <laughs> because I'm just a, the cancer in me is just a sucker for love okay and then if you add art it's just like chef's kiss um, so this is my comfort book I will say it just makes me feel like it oh <laughs> it just calms me down when I read it and I just love so in this book it is romanticizing these two people who come together as artists and they're navigating their way as defining themselves as an artist and how they want to define themselves in a society where art is coming up this is around like the 70s really kind of the 60s but like when psychedelics started to come in when, when artists started to blossom more where people started to bring individuality into society and find themselves finding their own path and I feel like this book really highlights the journey of what it is to be an artist it also highlights and shows a great balance between death and rebirth and also the journey of living to make art these people live to make art it wasn't oh art is a hobby no they woke up every day and made art they went to bed making art they thought about art their life path was set to end up being an artist and you're able to navigate their lives separately what was going on personally what 
what's going on throughout the world politically and how it affected their life as an individual and also as an artist. Um, and in particular with these two artists, they are very famous. Um, this is Patti Smith and then you have Robert Maplethorpe. And uh, Robert was a photographer. He, ended, he started to be a painter, gradually became a, a famous photographer, which I'll show pictures of his work I feel like doesn't really justify on the phone. It's something you need to see in person. And Patti Smith ended up becoming becoming um, a singer because she also played instruments. So I'm not sure if she did all, but she definitely became a singer. She became known for her music, um, but they both started as painters and gradually kind of found what the art form they wanted to best express themselves through. So I highly re recommend it. Recommend this book. It's such a good book. I love that book. I love it. I did want to express a quote from Just Kids. And the quote is, An artist who transformed his time, not mirrored it. Cute little quote. Nothing crazy, y'all. The next book I want to talk about is called Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. This book is a thousand out of a thousand. <laughs> I adore this book actually. I don't have it with me. I definitely want to physically have it in my collection at some point, but I end up getting this book through um, my partner, but I know they have it in the library. So this book, I feel like to, I really can't put it into words, but pretty much the book is, it is weird way it's it's mainly focusing on the history and the life of napoleon hill and how he became who he is but it it goes as to such a spiritual aspect of it and not the cheesy like oh this and that and i asked the universe like it just felt very sincere like no i asked for something i i followed the guy the guidelines of what my source wanted me to do i asked for help and I was able to get the answers and the people that I need in order to become the higher self that I need to be for the next person in my life. It's a very selfless book. It's a very much, it's focusing on what it is to be rich within your heart, what it is to be rich in your personality, your individuality, not focusing on being rich financially and being this upper high end important person. And that's all your, that's all your worth is, is what your status is. It's, it goes very deeply and not only does it go through that journey but it also helps to connect the idea that there is a solution to your problems and there is an explanation to your problems and it just kept you know it kept me hopeful and not only the journey of figuring out my life path but also kept me hopeful in the journey of knowing that everything happens for a reason every person you meet everything you go through it's not for you it's for the next person who's gonna need you um and i had a lot of ahas and oh oh that's me for sure or like i had a lot of moments where i was like oh my god that makes sense <laughs> so um i did have a quote for this book too and it is a new world is revealed to me whatever man believes to be true has a way of becoming true and yeah, this book was amazing. I highly recommend this book. It's Chef's Kiss. So I do want to express the good thing about this. Let's say my summaries are not good enough and you want to go a little deeper into these books before buying it, before going your way out to get it from the library. I have a podcast that I do book reviews on. Just give a little applause. Um, yeah, I have a podcast called Gray Space. I will link it below if you want to check it out. But a lot of these books that I'm talking about is on the podcast. And I go into more depth because within that time, it's fresh in my mind. I'm probably maybe a few days after reading that book. So I have all my notes down. I'm going from quote to quote and just talking about it in depth. So if you want that experience, definitely check it out. I will link it below. And support the platform of course if you have gotten this far too i think at this point you should like and subscribe and just support the channel um but yeah let's get back into it the next book i want to talk about is called codependent no more 
by Melody Beatty. I gave this book a 10 out of 10. And this book definitely had a major impact on my spiritual journey. Um, again, this was another book where it helped me navigate why I have problems in my relationships. It helped me navigate myself in particular and what was going on, why I was having the issues of, why I was having the issues that I was having within my relationships, especially the ones I was having with myself. Um, and it also made me feel okay with my struggles. It didn't make me feel shitty. It didn't make me feel like, oh, I need to fix this right now. It motivated me to want to fix it, but it didn't force me. But it helped me to be able to sit with what, what was the truth. It helped me sit through what needed to be changed in order to get what I wanted. And, um, yeah, it just helped to explain a lot of stuff. And also it gave me a solution to my struggles, which we love. Um, so it just helped me to be hopeful in the journey of healing relationships with myself and with others. A lot of aha moments too. And a lot of like, oh my God, that's me. Am I the problem? Um, and a quote, a small quote from there is, don't be blown about by every wind. So yeah, this that book was Chef's Kiss. Got it from the library too. So yeah. Next book is called Fi Feeding Your Demons. I know, I know. Please y'all, everybody relax. Every time I talk about this book, and then when I say the title, everybody's like, what are you on? <laughs> it's not like that, y'all. Um, this book, I gave it a 10 out of 10. I should have gave it more. This is probably a thousand out of a thousand. This book is, it's um, a self-help book, but a very spiritual self-help book. Um, this book was, it was heavy. It was heavy. When I read this book, I was in the pit of my soul. I was in the deep part of my shadows. And it is a very deep shadow workbook. Um, but it was such a good guidance through how to work through your shadows. Um, a lot of my last journal that I had is full of it because they give you prompts. They give you questions to ask yourself. They give you stuff to do. There's a lot of activities to do. So... I had a journal for it in particular and it's just a book where it helps you to meet your dark side it helps to meet your you have a yin and a yang moment you know you meet your other half um and it helped me to be able to look at myself and look at all of me no matter how dark it may look um and just to become allies with your flesh it's like a book where it helps you to bring the two together your spirit and your flesh and become best friends rather than i gotta i gotta kill the ego i gotta it's nothing wrong with the ego you gotta become united with it and find a balance um and yeah i really i really love that book that was a good book it was heavy but it was good and it's so funny the way i found it was i was just I kind of started doing this thing where I would just go to the library and I would just look through stuff and whatever caught my attention, I would just pull it out. And this was the one that caught my attention. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and the next book, Finding Your Element by Ken Robinson. Um, this book, I mean, it explains it. How to discover your talents and passions and transform your life. It sounds cheesy, y'all. I know, I know. It sounds... I think I found this book in... Um, you know those like outside like small like library boxes that they have i found it in that and i was like oh i'll just read it for fun i did give this book an eight out of ten i'm gonna be honest you might be wondering why is it even on your list if it's eight out of ten i did love this book it was it's pretty much a step-by-step -step guideline on how to become energetically better how to become your better self um but it was at a point where I did stop reading it, reading it. So my scoring is only from because I didn't finish it, not because of the quality of the book. Um, but it helped me to bestow better habits in my life, like journaling, waking up every day and making sure I'm doing some type of yoga, some type of meditation. 
um it helped me just to while trying to do the feeding of your demons it helped me to navigate the light side of it like how to actually release it and to not dwell in it um but yeah no this book really helped me to find balance in my life um and i guess yeah it helped me to transform my life kind of um and a quote from there is people will talk about their fear of failure and i will find that it is that it is a mask for the fear of success underneath it it is feeling that i don't deserve whatever success might bring into my life that is one of the quotes from the book so yeah the last book that i will be talking about is the law of attraction <laughs> everybody this book is so common the the title itself is very common at this point everybody knows everybody knows um but it's a good book y'all i as you can tell i highlighted i highlighted i highlighted until i couldn't no more i even put specific pages that i like it was a good book it was a good book um so this book get a 10 out of 10 i know everybody everybody knows but um i will say i honestly don't remember everything out of this book because i did read it a long time ago but what i will say i like this book because within it it has subtitles and these subtitles talk about specific things so one of the questions will be should i meditate or another question is what is the measure of our success or my success um it's a very straightforward type of thing where it's like question answer question answer sometimes they'll go into examples sometimes they'll talk about experience but it's very much like that type of guidance of question answer um and i loved it because it was a quick read it didn't take me long to read at all um and a quote from this one is within all people there are vibrations of that which is wanted and vibrates uh, at a lack of what is wanted and everything that comes into the experience always matches the energy that is the most dominant and yeah so that was the last book for this video if you loved this video as much as i did i will hope you like and subscribe and share this video with others um and if you like any of the books like i said i will link below where you can find a cheaper version of it if that is the issue um i will also just write down a list of every book that i talked about within this video and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you in my next video peace